There's a movie in theaters right now. We're talking about it. Renfield. How do you like that for an opening? What do you think? Okay, I said something different. <laughs> uh, whatever you want to do. I don't know. Welcome back to the movie stash. Welcome back to the movie stash. We're talking about a movie that's in theaters right now, Renfield. It is a vampire Dracula Nick Cage movie. It's just a Nick Cage movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Those are three things that like you're on board. It doesn't matter to the genre. If Nicolas Cage is in it, the genre is automatically a Nick Cage movie. Yeah, that's kind of true. Or Red Box movie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I feel like I want you to start. Why don't you start? All right, well, uh, <laughs> Renfield is a, a classic story about Dracula in, in the... For, oh, I'm sorry. Renfield is the classic Dracula story take place in modern day. So in the original Dracula movie, Dracula hires, uh, was it a lawyer, a real estate agent? Yeah. And he ends up becoming his protector uh, while he's sleeping and, and doing stuff for him during the day. And I thought that that was a really interesting take to have it take place in modern day after all these years... It takes place now, and it's Renfield's story, which I thought was a very interesting concept for a Dracula movie. So is that, like, that That was already a known story before yes. this movie, right? Yeah, the, the original Dracula movie it has Renfield and Dracula in it. Oh, okay. I yeah, they, they, they should. They actually recreated some of those scenes in this movie, and I thought that was pretty cool. I like that. You know, uh, ho horror and Dracula is not really my genre, Um but um, this looked like a fun movie. Yeah. So, and it was only an hour and a half, so. I gotta say, this is the second movie I saw in the theaters back to back that was an hour and a half. And I'm so happy hour and a half movies are back in action. They heard us. Yeah, <laughs> they did. They heard. I think you said they hurt us. No, they heard us. Yeah. I feel like the movie industry definitely watches this show. Like, there's a lot of things <laughs> Like, all your predictions about the Scream movie happened. Yeah. Uh, there's a bunch of other stuff, like uh, things that we joked about would happen in the future with, with universes jumping with other movies other than, like, Marvel or DC. Have we said it's going to happen in other movies? Oh, I said I called that. Yeah. And James Gunn recently came out and said, hey, that's a possibility. I called that years ago. DC and Marvel are going to have a crossover event at some point when the superhero movie no, no, no. goes down. I don't mean that. Okay. I mean, remember we were joking about how movies that are not comic book movies at all... And we were joking about like you know like uh, like Terminator shows up in Twister or something. Remember we were joking about that? Oh yeah. So like things like that are actually starting to happen. And I'm reading it's rumored, but I'm reading that the new Fast and the Furious movie is going to jump into a Marvel universe. Oh really? I heard <laughs> yeah. it. I heard it was going to be the Jurassic universe. Or maybe it's that. See, the, see, years ago, a couple of years ago, I heard that they were thinking. No, no, no. What was this it? Is how rumors get started? No, no. The, the Twenty One Jump Street in some other franchise we're going to cross over. I forget which one it was, but you know, that's it's that, coming. They, they're just trying to force stuff together to get people out in the movies. And all they really need to do is just make it an hour and a half long. Like it, I, th I feel like hour and a half movies are going to eventually make them more money. Cause it has a better rewatchability factor because oh, yeah. you can go back and go see it a couple of times rather than like, Oh, it's two and a half hours, three hours long. I'm only going to see it in the theater once, but if it's an hour and a half and you had fun, Oh yeah. I could run back and go see it again. It's also a great way to get people back to the movies mm -hmm. because I feel like during the pandemic, when everybody was watching things at home, things were going direct to streaming. People got really comfortable doing that. Yeah. And, and, and now, you know, you can have a three hour movie because people were just like pausing it. You make a drink yeah. and you watch it in sections. But uh, and then going back to the movies and watching a two and a half hour or three hour movie, we're like, it's too long to be sitting in the theater. Yeah. And uh, the hour and a half movies is a great way to bring people back. Bring it back. Bring it back. I'm all for bringing back hour and a half movies. Uh, I'm, I'm down. Especially this movie, because it wasn't that good. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll agree with you. I'm happy with the runtime. I just wish that they could figure out how to make an hour and a half really fun the entire time. Yeah, like you, like you feel like you got a full-length movie. I will say this movie, you know I complain about movies feeling long. Mm -hmm. I will say this movie didn't feel long and it didn't feel short. It, it You know what? I'll agree with you. It, it didn't feel long, but I do feel like it wasn't as entertaining as I wanted it to be. Yeah. Like, it was It was still good. It was still good and entertaining. 
Uh, the best part definitely was Nicolas Cage. Nicolas yeah. Cage was such, even though it was a comedy, he was such a great Dracula. Like, uh, from beginning to end, even when he still had his Nicolas Cage moments. You know when Nicolas Cage goes kind of crazy and he has like, ah! He has yeah, like yeah. his weird laughing. He, he still had those moments in there, but the whole like he takes comedy seriously. Even when he's trying to be funny, he still takes it seriously. That's I loved what it. I, I loved it, and he was such a great Dracula. Let's dive right into this movie. All okay, right. so right away from the beginning, uh, I was expecting there to be a, a lot of like uh, Renfield story and modern day story, and then eventually a big Dracula reveal. Mm -hmm. But right away from the beginning, we see Dracula. They tell the story, and. Um, for half a second, I was like, well, that's kind of lame. I wanted this big Dracula reveal. But actually, it it was kind of cool. Well, in a way that they did. In the way that they did it, it was kind of Because, cool. you know, Dracula throughout the years was decrepit and he needed blood. And so you didn't really get to see... You got to see some really cool gore and makeup before you could see Nick Cage. Uh, but And then when you finally saw Nick Cage, I felt like that was a real Dracula reveal of what he's supposed to look like. Uh, and I, I also like what you see in the beginning, which I don't know if I should save this for what did we like about the movie. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'll save it. We'll save it towards the end. I'll All save right. it towards the end. Um, what next then? Uh, how about the things that you didn't like? Okay. You want to go like that? What didn't you like about Renfield? So the fact that it's not a good movie is <laughs> one thing that I didn't like about it, uh, which is unfortunate because Nick Cage is great as Dracula. I would actually like to see more of these movies made with him as Dracula. Okay. Um, it's just kind of bad writing. Uh, I didn't like the story, really. I didn't like the script. It's really stupid. Um, and I don't like... I hate to say it. I don't like Aquafina. Yeah. And the reason I say I hate to say that is because she's a comedian and she seems like... I've never had the privilege of meeting her, but she seems like a really cool, fun person. Yeah. Uh, and good for her that she's doing great, but I, I don't know. She kind of, I, I don't, I, she's not my favorite character in the movie. I feel like it, 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 it gave it a low budget feel. Not that she shouldn't be paid high, but I'm saying it's like, all right, let me stop beating her on the bush. She's not a good actress. <laughs> I, you know what? I, I can almost agree with you to the point. She doesn't annoy me as she used to. Okay. Like, I, I didn't feel like she ruined the movie for me. I, I didn't, I didn't not like her. Um, I, I thought that her character, it, I, th this goes for the whole movie. I thought the whole concept for the movie was good, but you're right. When it comes to the writing, it, it, it just didn't, it, it, it wasn't like, I can't wait to go see this movie again, even though it's an hour and a half long. If it's an hour and a half long, you should just jam pack all the really great stuff. And, and I just didn't, I didn't feel that. But with, with Aquafina, her voice used to really annoy me like earlier not in the movie, but just earlier in her career, I guess. But now, like, I, I don't mind her at all. And I don't think that she's a bad actress. I think that maybe she's forced into a lot of movies, I guess. I don't think she really annoys me, but I'm on the fence with her because she's very likable. I think, yeah, I, think, I do like her. I think that she's very likable, but at the same time, I don't think that she is necessarily very funny. And I... she's thrown into these, like, comedy roles. And uh, I don't know if it's the comedic timing or... I mean, for all we know, the, the script was so bad, she did her absolute best with it. But uh, I, I just felt the script wasn't very good, so maybe you can't blame her. Um, let me move on to another thing I don't like about this movie. I don't want to okay. shit on Aquafina the whole time. Um, another thing that I didn't like about this movie. There's two types of comedy genres that I don't like. Yeah. One is stoner comedy. Okay. okay? That wasn't in this movie, but those are, I'm just naming two things I don't like. I don't like stoner comedy. I have no idea, even stand-up comics, I have no idea why we're supposed to think that being high is so freaking hilarious. I, I have no idea why. I always see comics on stage, like, telling a story. They're like, so I got really high. Like, I don't want to hear it. I, I tell, I, a good story on stage is when you weren't high. You know, if, yeah. you're, if you were high, it's like, okay, so there's going to be something crazy that happened to you because you're high. Let's hear about things crazy that happened to you because you weren't. Anyway, I want to. I don't want to harp on that. I just don't like stoner comedy. Happy 420. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It is 420. It's 420. All right. And the second thing that I don't like in comedies is when they're trying to make gore funny. Mm. I don't like bloody comedy. I don't like... Like, we see him, like, ripping arms off people and yeah. using them as weapons, which, if it was, like, a straight 
vampire or zombie type movie, I would say that's a cool scene, but they were trying to make it funny, and I don't find that funny. I do. <laughs> I know you do. <laughs> no, I think I think gore is is a great way of comedy, but I do have something I didn't like about the way that they did it. I felt like the CGI of the gore that they did was it feels like they made they made people's heads explode too easily. Mm -hmm. It feel like everybody's head or every part of their body was made from a water balloon. Yeah. And it looked really fake. That was filled with guts. <laughs> yeah. See, there's a difference. CGI fake and then practical makeup fake are different types of fake. And I like the practical makeup fake because you have to physically do that right there. And that takes in like a really good artistry in it. Not yeah. that CGI isn't artistry, but CGI like that. It, it looks like it's the easy way out. And the way that they did it, I felt like was too, it was, it, it was explosive? too easy too explain. It made it feel like people were just made out of water balloons filled yeah. with jelly. That, I that's what I didn't you. like. I, but I do love, I do love gore in comedy. I think that that is a great, and I love the ones that they did in this. It just looked way too fake. I, I agree with you, but I think that they, that was just to show how powerful they were just by a simple touch that they would explode. Yes, to, but, to but even the so, that they have. but even so, if you can't do that, it still looked fake. So you can explain it away all you want. If, if I'm looking at it and I'm like, that just looks way too jelly or it doesn't look like, it looks like they were made out of water balloons and that's what I didn't like. What's your favorite gore comedy? I really do love, uh, Cabin in the Woods. I'm going to say horror comedy, but gore comedy uh, off the top of my head. It's, it's weird because even if it's not comedy, I still laugh at gore. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> you it, it really is. You laugh at the weirdest parts. Like it's if so people awkward. die, if people die fucked up, I'm going to laugh. It's and so... if it's gory, I'm going to laugh even more because I think it's really awesome. And I, especially if it's practical. I, I, I don't like going to a theater with you when there's gore and there's a bunch of people around us and everybody's like, oh my God, that guy just got stabbed. And Kevin's like, ha, 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 ha. Yeah. <laughs> um, my favorite gore comedy is Shaun of the Dead. That's yeah. the one, the one where I don't mind gore mm -hmm. comedy and they actually do it right. Leave it to the Brits. Yeah. <laughs> to be, have it, to have a dark sense of humor. Um, are we still on what we don't like about the movie? Uh, yeah. I, I mean, for me, I, I just, I just didn't like the movie. <laughs> It's just, it's just not good. <laughs> I, I remember the movie ending, and I was just like, hmm, I kind of wish we went to go see Air. Yeah, I kind of wish we did, too. Yeah, yeah. but... but I've seen know, it, but I would have seen Air again with you. I, I really I really wanted to see Nick Cage as Dracula. and So did I. That's why I wanted to go see it. But I, you know what else I don't like? I don't like Nicholas Holt, the actor who plays Renfield. I thought he did mm. good in this. And, and the roles that he does play... In other movies, I I think he does he does fine, but I, I'm just not a fan of him. I don't I don't know what it is about him, but there's something about him that I don't like, and uh, I yeah. can't I can't put my finger on it. You know, he's a talented guy, and I don't think that he was right for this. I didn't I didn't really dig him in this movie. Mm -hmm. I was reading about him about how he was casted for so many like great roles. Uh, yeah. Off the top of my head, I couldn't name him to you like even like superhero stuff that he, they ended up recasting because he just wasn't right mm -hmm. after screen tests and stuff. And I just, they keep trying to find his thing, and we can't find his thing. And, and uh, yeah, he was a little whatever for me. Like, I wouldn't, I, I, I thought he, he didn't add to this movie. I, I, th I thought he did well playing Renfield. He did well. I thought he did well playing Renfield. I just wish it was just, uh, they took the concept and made a better story with it. Um, and, and you know what? You could say it's because it was an hour and a half. I feel like I'm glad that they're going with an hour and a half. I feel like that they need to change their writing structure for hour and a half movies to make it more entertaining. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. it feels like there's, it, it just goes by way too fast. It's almost like a sketch. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I do. And with the, uh, the bugs. I do like that they added this about Renfield that he eats bugs and he be he gets Dracula powers and I thought that was really cool but I'm trying to think I'm like how long does that last you know what I mean because he eats a bug and he's like super powerful I, I don't know it, it feel it feels like they didn't explain that 
yeah, too well. Yeah, because there were moments where he would eat it and get powers instantly, and then there were other moments where he was in the car on his way to do battle, and he was eating the bugs already. Yeah, it wouldn't wear <laughs> off by the time he gets there. Also, it shows you how fucked up Dracula is, because you know Dracula gave him his powers. Yeah. And to get his powers, he made him have to eat bugs. Like, he could have made it anything. <laughs> <laughs> You could have made him, like, pull his nose or something. He's like, I'm going to make this motherfucker have to eat bugs yeah. every time yeah. he wants to get his powers. Which is actually a great symbol of a lot of powerful things that we can consume and how we will do them. Because of greed, we will mm. do horrible things. Yeah. So, what did you like about Renfield? <laughs> we never cheers, by the way. Oh, yeah. Let's cheers. You're going to need a sip of whiskey to talk about and find something that you liked about this movie. So what did you like about Renfield? No, I have things that I like about the movie. Okay. Obviously, I love Nicolas Cage as yeah. Dracula. Absolutely. And I remember... <laughs> Whenever they showed Nicolas Cage, like, you know, in the making of, we were seeing sneak peeks of yeah. him uh, in these Dracula costume and rings on his fingers mm -hmm. and stuff like that. I was like, how do we even know that he's filming Dracula? That could just be Nick Cage walking down the street. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, did he bring his own wardrobe and jewelry to, to this set? <laughs> I feel like he would wear that in his everyday life. He's born to be Dracula. Uh, but yes, things I did like about it. I I like Nick Cage as Dracula. I like um, I like Nick Cage's little quirks mm -hmm. that he released into Dracula, like woo, you know, <laughs> things like that. <laughs> even at the even at the end when he's in the in the circle of salt and he and, and he's like, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, just like. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> I love that they let Nick Cage through a little bit. I, I love that scene when Nick Cage, like, when he's Dracula, and he, he's, like, full power again. And uh, Renfield had went out and got his own apartment. And then, you know, he's kind of going behind mm -hmm. Dracula's back. And then Dracula confronts him in his apartment. I thought that that scene was really funny. I thought it was Because he was really catching funny. him in the lies, like, oh, yeah? Oh, yeah? I thought that was... And he's drinking wine, which is just blood yeah. eyeballs in it. He's like, yeah. oh, you, oh you, you were on your way. You are on yeah, your way yeah. to see me. Yeah. yeah. I thought that was great. And that it was so Nick Cage. And I, I, I didn't realize that, you know, Nick Cage playing Dracula had so much Nick Cage in it. But it still felt like Dracula yeah. the entire time. And that made me really proud of him because I know that he loves monster movies. And, and I'm really proud of him being able to play such an iconic horror character. And not only that, doing it so well. I would watch an entire whole movie of just him as Dracula. And I would love to see it like they did some scenes where they were recreating some of the original footage from the original Dracula movie. I'm like, I would watch that entire fucking movie. With, ever... Nick, with Nick Cage, yeah. The black and white. Yeah, have you ever seen that movie? Uh, no, no, I'm just going to say no. Hope you... Hope you win trivia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, and that's one of the things I liked about this movie. I liked that scene that they yeah. recreated in the beginning. Yeah. That was really cool. Yeah, only Nick Cage can be, like, so creepy to be Dracula at the same time. Pull off that scene in the new apartment so comedically. Yeah. Yeah. So, it, it, um, it takes uh, somebody with that type of gravitas to, to, to pull off horror comedy and still not be silly. Like, because it is Nick Cage. He is his own genre. And so when, even when he has his quirks, he takes his quirks and his comedy so seriously that, like, you just can't help but just be engaged and just keep watching him. So, um, real quick, another thing I, I didn't like about the, about the movie it just kind of gives you the whole how stupid this is is when they the mafia sent in this in the beginning sent in this killer assassin to yeah. take out those guys it's like it was like this guy this big guy with a mask who was like talk like it's like, it like a wrestler this, i was like is this bane yeah. <laughs> it was it was literally like the val no excuse me it it was it was literally like the george clooney batman's bane yeah it, it was really stupid but that leads me into one thing that I really liked about this movie. A character that I really liked about this movie is the son of the mafia. Oh, yeah. Oh, what's his name? God, what was his name? That actor's name. You mean I, the, I don't have my phone. He, he, he made his appearance in Parks and Rec. And not only that, he was also the voice of BB-8 in the Star Wars movies. Oh, really? I bet you didn't know I that. I didn't know that. He was also the voice of Sonic the Hedgehog. I'll tell you what else. I don't even know what BB-8 is. That's uh, <laughs> one of the droids, a little ball droid. But I do, I like that actor a lot. I thought that he did great in the movie. I thought that his character was opposite of Renfield, like they were the battle characters. Mm -hmm. And I, I thought that he did great. I really enjoyed that, I, guy, that actor. That guy was awesome. Yeah. I, I thought he was like the perfect for that role. And he was also very, very funny. 
And he's like the evil twin of Andrew Garfield. Yes, and a couple Steve times I had from those... Stranger Things. Say it again. Steve from Stranger Things. He's like his <laughs> twin too. I can I can see that. I can see that too. Yeah. But a couple times throughout the movie, I was like, is that Andrew Garfield. <laughs> he's a he's a great actor, and I'm so mad that I I I'm blanking on his name right now. But, but what he was, was the, great. the what was the guy's name in the movie? I don't remember. I do, I only remember Dracula. Can you Google it real Renfield. quick, just so I can like say that we knew what we were talking about? Like, just look up the cast of Renfield. That's what I'm gonna. That's what I'm gonna do. Ben Schwartz. But what? Who, what's the name in the? In the Teddy movie? Lobo. Oh yeah, Teddy Lobo. Ben Schwartz. Ben Schwartz is his name. He's he's so great comedically. Uh, I I just I really like him and everything that he's done. Every time I've seen him in uh, I've seen him in Parks and Rec. Uh, I know he does a lot of voice acting stuff. Uh, he's he's just a he he's a great animated actor and uh it's just yeah. really fun to watch him work and he worked well in this movie listen i'm sorry to aquafina i'm sorry to i'm not sorry i i did not mind her in Hold this on. movie I, I'm, I'm sorry to the guy that plays renfield um nicholas holt the the ones that steal this show is obviously nick cage yeah and ben yeah ben schwartz yeah that's that's the that's dude, dude these those two were were the stars of the movie. They were great, and you know what? The concept of the movie was great. I really liked how it was Renfield in a self help group, and he was trying to find victims for Dracula, but not innocent victims. He was trying to find people who were abused by others, and he was trying to get those people to feed to Dracula. The, you explain that to me, I'm like, that sounds like a great movie. But then when when we watched it, I was yeah. just like. Nah, it was a little bit too goofy. Some of the action sequences too were kind of hard to follow a little bit from what I remember. I remember watching it, and like I remember feeling dizzy watching some of the action sequences at the beginning. And we were sitting far back in the theater. I wasn't like up close getting dizzy. We were far back, and I was just like, uh, but whatever. I totally agree with you on that, man. Yeah, I I think that I like that story too of the, of him going to the group meeting and stuff. I thought it was pretty funny. And and the I fact that, that they centered it around not around Dracula, but about Dracula's um, was it familiar? Whoever is watching Dracula while he sleeps and doing his deeds during the day, I thought that focusing on that character was really cool. I thought that was a really great concept. I wish that they did a little bit more with it. Um, and, and made the story a little bit better, even though I really enjoyed the concept. It was a great concept, and I just think that the writing was a little yeah. bad. Yeah. It, it yeah. was a little too stupid and silly, but you know what, man? We got through it. Yeah, we, got we did. It. We did get through it. We got through it. And I love monster movies. You know I love horror. Mm -hmm. I'm not a huge fan of vampire movies. Oh, really? I'm not, not really. I will watch them. Well, I you will like Dracula, and then besides that, there's only Twilight. <laughs> so, well, there's, no, there's so many other vampire movies. I'm what about Blade? Getting. Blade. I mean, that's a Wesley Snipes movie. You don't like Blade? I do. I do enjoy watching them. Um, but I, I will say that that vampires are not. Mean? What's that? I never seen Blade. You never saw Blade? Nope. Okay, I'm gonna change some. Things. Can I tell you that my my childhood youth, we were not allowed to watch a lot of stuff because we were too religious. Like my dad didn't like Dracula stuff, and he didn't like any like satan worshiping things and anything evil and dark like that which is probably why i'm not such a big horror fan but we were allowed to watch like scream and halloween which were thrillers which is why i like those that's the opposite of my family they didn't <laughs> give a shit what i watched <laughs> but my dad would be mad if i watched a stupid like this is just stupid i can't watch it but it didn't matter if it was gore violent sex scenes they didn't care me and your but dad had like... that in common <laughs> you know, i also i also don't like when you watch stupid that's shit. so stupid this is so dumb Although the dumbest movie that my dad watched, and he still calls it stupid, but he quotes it all the time, is Napoleon Dynamite. Have you ever seen Napoleon Dynamite? Of course, Dynamite? yeah. Uh, it's so stupid. I that, it, Napoleon it's, Dynamite is like the top of the list of like good stupid. Yeah. It's supposed to be stupid. It, it is. It, it's a it, dumb and dumber. It's supposed to be dumb. It's, I love that movie to death. It definitely captures an era. Yes. All right. Um, we got to get down to our two final questions. Question number one, what's Renfield on the Ogometer? You know what, dude? I was at a six, but after talking about the movie with you, yeah, which we didn't really get to do after so the, you're uh, at a two. theater. Yeah. No, no, no. I was having fun talking about the movie with you yeah, Okay. right now that it reminded me about the stuff that I did like about it. So I am going to a 6.5. Ooh, okay. All right. All right. I will say that I'm probably at a seven. 
Maybe okay. I'm a seven seven point five. Uh, but all the goodness is about Nick Cage. Like I like he was great. And I would, Lobo. Yeah, yeah. He but but mainly Nick Cage. I, I still remember the guy's name. Ben Lobo. Ben Schwartz. Lo, what's his first name in the movie? Teddy Lobo. Teddy Lobo. He was, right. Yeah, he was great. Second question about the movie. Okay. You know what it is. Is it in my movie stash? Yeah. Mm, you know what? I I will watch it again, but I don't know if I would want to go out and buy it. Other than the fact that it was Nick Cage's Dracula. So I will say that this movie is not in my stash, but I will watch it again. I'm with you. I'd watch it one more time. Yeah. It would get one more viewing out of me. When it comes to streaming at home, I would watch it one more time and I would not add it to my movie stash. But I want to see more Nick Cage's Dracula, so I am yes. open to a sequel. If it was all Nick Cage Dracula, if it was a Nick Cage Dracula movie where it was about him the whole time, I, I probably would have rated it higher. All right, you ready to do some trivia? Bro, I'm excited for trivia. Let's do trivia. I think you should go first. I get to go first. And since we watched uh, Renfield with Nicolas Cage, I thought it would be fun to just come up with a bunch of Nicolas tri Cage trivia for okay. you. In the movie Face Off, Nicolas Cage played Caster Troy. Mm -hmm. What was his brother's name? Um... Oh my god, dude. Shut up. Don't don't even breathe. This is how I know it's a good question. Don't even breathe for a second. It's a ridiculous name. Yeah. I feel like I've even asked you this question before. Caster Troy and Fuck dude. I know I know the answer. I'm so mad because I can't sit here and think forever. I don't know. It's something weird. Mm -hmm. Do you give up? Fuck no! Give me, give me, give me like one no, more minute. No, I can't. Like one more minute. All one right, minute. one more minute, dude. Whatever you got, whatever you got to do to fail. Fuck, I give up. You give up? Yeah. Pollux Troy. Fuck, fuck, fuck <laughs> do you do fuck, it? Fuck, I knew it. Because now you know fuck, it. Fuck, now fuck, you know it. Fuck, fuck yeah. Fuck, 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 that was, but that was shit, a good question fuck, though, fuck. right? Will you say that that was a good question? Yeah. Okay, good. All right, all right. Mother shit! Okay. I knew it. Okay. Ask me a question, sir. Who wore this jacket in what movie? I'll take either answer. If you can name the movie or if you can name the actor. Still on. No. Who was it? Matt Damon in Good Will Hunting. Oh, that's fucking right. What scene was that in Good Will Hunting? He's sitting in, uh, in Robin Williams' office with, with it. Oh, okay. Yeah. I saw, I saw Cobra and I thought Cobra was <laughs> Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. All right, on to my question. Okay. Nicolas Cage question. What movie was Nicolas Cage's first feature-length film? He may not have starred in it, but he was in it and it was his first feature-length film. Moonstruck. Nope. What? Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Motherfucker, that's he yeah. worked at the burger joint. With I Jim know Reynolds. he did, but I didn't. Even, <laughs> I, I didn't think that. I was thinking that was too small of a role because he didn't have any lines. All right, right, all right. Give me a question. Give me a question. In Twister, okay. Let me tell you again. Ooh. In Twister, what song is Philip Seymour Hoffman playing on his loudspeaker above the van? That is the um, dun -dun 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 -dun. is that it? No, no. Uh, no wait, what the what's what song? It's an actual song. What was the scene? It's like uh, right before they're all packing up because they heard there's a tornado coming and they're like pack up their shit. And he runs in the van and he plays the song. I don't know. What is it? Motherless Child by Eric Clapton. Okay. Yeah. That was the game. Really? I bet you if I play it for you, you'd know. Yeah, I would know. But even if I heard that song, I wouldn't be able to name it. If I if I played that song for you, the first I would know. I would know. You to go, this is from Twister. Yeah. Okay. I know, but I wouldn't be able to name the song. That's what I'm saying. I would know the song. There's so many famous songs I know that I don't know the name to. All right. Nicholas Cage. <laughs> 
is the nephew of which famous Hollywood filmmaker? <laughs> Francis Ford Coppola. All right, you got that one. Good for you. Yeah. Now give me an easy layout, motherfucker. And who is he related to? What's that? Who is he related to? Who's his aunt? Francis Ford Coppola. No, Talia Shire. Okay. She's the wife from Rocky. That's his cousin. Oh, okay. Or his aunt. And I always respected him that he didn't take the Coppola name. It's his real last name. Yeah, I know. I respect that, too. I, I think that's... He got it. his last name from a comic book. Okay. Anyway. Like Luke Cage? Yeah. What actor was stationed with Jimmy Stewart during World War II and got inspired so when he went home from World War II, decided he was going to become an actor? I don't know. Dude, Walter you, Matthau. Okay, give me fucking questions I'm going to know the fucking answer to. You may have known it's that. It's supposed to be about movies, dude. You know a lot of movie knowledge. You, you, you have like... And you know a lot about Walter Matthau. Everything. everything. And Jimmy Stewart. Hold on, let me, let me say it again because you talked over me. Walter Matthau. I love Walter Matthau. But you, we're supposed to be asking questions about movies. All right, but isn't that a fun fact? It is a fun fact, but we're supposed to be you asking... You didn't know that? I didn't know that. Bro, they were stationed together, and then and he was talking about acting. He and I, you know what? I bet Walter Matthau called him a dickhead at least once. <laughs> but we're supposed to be questions about movies, I'm sorry, dude. I thought you lo- knew a lot about both those Man, actors. You, you always know you a lot of facts. You asked the most impossible fucking questions. You always know a lot of facts. It's supposed to be about movies that we should have watched. Those are movie stars. Man, now I just want to give you really fucking... I've been going so easy on you. Well, I got a couple easy ones for you. In the movie Gone in 60 Seconds, what was the nickname for Nicolas Cage's favorite car? (laughs) Eleanor. Two, already. (laughs) Give me a fucking easy question. You got it. Make them so fucking hard, dude. They're ridiculous. Do you want a can't hardly... I want an easy question. Wait, do you want a can't hardly wait question or a super, super, super easy question? Give me a super easy question because it's two nothing, bro. All right. In the movie The Ring. Wait, that's not easy for you? Uh, I asked the question. Isn't it a horror I movie like the. Uh, oh, The Ring? Yeah. I saw it like once. You don't think you would know? I feel no, like I'm not going to know this movie. I'm not going to know this. I saw say, the movie I'll, once. I might ask you I today. I can't even name an actor in the, in the movie. I might ask you today, but I'll give you another easier question. Okay. What is my t shirt from? Twins. Yeah, there you go. You got one. <laughs> Nicolas Cage was cast as Superman in a canceled Superman movie directed by which famous director? Tim Burton? Yeah. Really? Yeah, you won. Go Get ahead. the fuck out of here. It's Tim Burton. Bro, that was a random fucking guess. Because <clears throat> he did the Batman movies. Wow. I won. You won. Wow, I can't believe I got that. Good for you, because I gave you questions that I knew that you would probably know Do you feel bad to. because you kind of gave me a clue, though? No. Did I give me a different question? No, that was it. Are you sure? Because I got a I bunch didn't even of get to, I didn't I even get that. to my picture question. You want to just keep going? No, we got it. What was that? What's a, what are you going to force me to watch? <laughs> I'm so... I, I hate... <laughs> fucking hate you. I give you easy layup questions and you give me like, who did fucking Elvis see at a gas station in 1964? <laughs> like, who, how the fuck? fuck am i supposed to know that i'm right. getting mad so we gotta end this i'm gonna have you watch 80 for brady <laughs> 80 for brady what's that <laughs> 80 for brady yeah that is tom brady's produced movie of a bunch of old ladies that are turning 80 years old and their goal is to go see tom brady play in the super bowl okay it's like I'll sally field and yeah <laughs> am i allowed to am i allowed to be fucked up Oh yeah, please. All right. All right, then let's do it. Have you seen it, Vinny? No. It's uh, it's it's streaming free on Paramount if you have it. Okay. It's about the Patriots Falcons Super Bowl, right? Yes. Yeah. Right. And uh, I watched it recently, and I'm curious to know what you think about it because I have an opinion about it. It's so funny because I'm so averse to sports nowadays. I know. I used to be such a huge sports fan. You have no idea. I wa- I I was into that Super Bowl. <laughs> so fuck yeah, let's do it. <laughs> I, I I know that it's like about sports and old ladies comedy, so it's it's not gonna be Kevin's go to. You you underestimate my love for old ladies. <laughs> That's a great way to end it. You know what they need to do? Remember grumpy old men? They need to make grumpy old broads. Yeah, but that they'll would fuck be really it up. funny. Yeah, but they'll fuck it up. Because they're grumpy old broads. I mean, you can just go out in the street and see that. Yeah. All right, I'm Kevin Lyons. I'm Augustino Dickhead. <laughs> this is the movie stash. The movie stash.